Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, October 21st. Tesla has revealed the Cybertruck's powertrain configurations and weight capacity with a new truck VIN decoder. In the decoder, Tesla mentions two powertrain configurations for the truck, dual motor standard and triple motor for the performance model. Now, when first unveiling the pickup, Tesla had mentioned a single motor along with the dual and tri-motor configurations. In previous vehicle releases from Tesla, the base model versions have been cut on a regular basis, only coming out years later. Now, we may see the same with the Cybertruck. Now, the decoder also makes reference to the gross vehicle weight rating, which is not the same as the vehicle weight, but instead also measures cargo and carrying capacity for passengers. Now, based on the listing of 8,000 to 9,000 pounds, and a second rating for 9 to 10,000 pounds, it shows that the Cybertruck will be a little bit heavier and more, have more capacity than the Ford F-150 Lightning, at least in the higher end configurations. Now, based on the data, we can assume that the top version of the Cybertruck, the tri-motor performance version, weighs about 6,500 pounds with a load capacity of 3,500. Tesla is attempting to boost sales by convincing owners of older Model S and X vehicles to upgrade and letting them transfer their free unlimited supercharging onto a new purchase. It's actually quite surprising considering that just a few months ago, Tesla was trying to get owners to give up that perk for buying a new car. For the first few years of selling the Model S and X, Tesla was offering free supercharging for the vehicle's lifetime. In 2018, Tesla ended the perk after claiming that it was unsustainable. Earlier this year, Tesla made a first effort to try to get those vehicles off the perk by offering owners an extra $5,000 discount if they trade in. Well, now Tesla seems to want new orders more than they want to retire the program, as it's now offering owners of that older vehicle benefit to transfer it over. The offer is valid for new Model S and X and Y vehicles with deliveries by the end of the year. Tesla tested the bulletproof capacity of the Cybertruck by shooting it on the side. A Cybertruck was spotted in the wild that was clearly shot at in an apparent attempt at bulletproof testing as it rolled down the freeway. A video was posted on Twitter of the sighting and Elon Musk commented saying, quote, We emptied the entire drum magazine of a Tommy gun into the driver door, Al Capone style. No bullets penetrated into the passenger compartment. Now, it should be noted that the window does not appear damaged at all. We're not sure if the window did very, very well or if it did not endure the same test. Today's episode is sponsored by AMP, makers of energy management solutions for e-mobility products. Team AMP is known for its expertise in the industry when it comes to understanding the battery and its functionality. With more than 300 years of combined experience, the team has developed proven battery management systems that are suitable for a wide range of applications, starting from 12 volts to 1000 volts. That extends to the AMP battery management systems algorithms that help companies building e-mobility products improve battery life while maximizing the power that can be safely utilized. The company also offers a highly integrated combination of charging software and hardware with AMP EMU. That includes an all-in-one DC-DC converter, onboard charger, power distribution, and a charge controller for electric vehicles. This unit saves space and cost in your EVs while providing maximum power density. Brands building new electric vehicle products will want to consider the AMP EVCC, a state-of-the-art charge controller for electric vehicles with support for all major charging standards, including CCS, NACS, and Shademo. And the AMP Fast Charge Junction Box to enable Level 3 DC fast charging, all built on the AMP charging software stack, the world's number one charging software capable of complying with all major charging standards globally. You can learn more about the AMP Energy Management Solutions at amp.tech. BMW has put to rest any hope of a revitalized i3 program, but personally I don't think that many people were waiting for that. The i3 launched as a 2013 model for BMW and fairly recently ended production. While the i3 name may live on with another car, the engineering and design of the original i3 will not. According to a recent interview with Automobile Woach, a member of the Board of Management for Development, Frank Weber, said, quote, A lot of people liked it, but in the eyes of others, the i3 was not a real BMW. A bit of an outsider in the classroom, if you will. We will not repeat that in this form. 
Now, Weber went on to promote the new class of BMW electric vehicles, which will introduce a mid-size sedan and an SUV on this new EV architecture. That puts any small car program on the back burner until 2026. Electrek's Jameson Dow takes a look at Norway's car sales and what it could mean for the oil industry at large. It's common knowledge that Norway is the land of electric cars, and the country keeps on breaking EV sales records with virtually no fossil fuel vehicle sales. But what's really important is the effects that those EVs could have on the oil industry sales, which are in a steep decline in the country as a result. Over 90% of new vehicles in the country have some sort of plug, which has contributed to Norway now exporting oil for profit. At some point, the oil extraction and exportation for Norway will no longer be profitable, unless, of course, it artificially is buoyed up by a symphony of subsidies across the world. Dow writes in conclusion, quote, If we finally let the market work freely after more than a century of both direct and implicit oil subsidies that have coddled this lying, deadly industry, we could finally see it spiral into the oblivion it deserves. At Electrek, we are left scratching our heads as a fellow journalist of the New York Times was left in the dust as his loner electric car ran out of battery. The blame, according to the Times reporter, lies at the feet of Hertz rental car for not informing him of the few charging stations in the direction that he was headed. I don't know if they knew that at all, but the reporter also briefly does blame himself for choosing an electric vehicle for a trip into rural farming country without checking on the availability of charging stations. That really seems to be the core of the issue. The reporter says that EVs and EV infrastructure aren't ready for regular Americans. And the article is rife with misunderstood details, painting a comedy of errors. But the moral of the story is fairly simple. A 300-plus mile road trip into rural Minnesota in an electric car does require a small amount of foresight or planning or at the very least paying attention to the charging stations that you have already passed. Jumping in head first is bound to bring up some troubles. At Electric, we look forward to the day when chargers are just as plentiful as gas stations, but admittedly gas stations have had over a hundred years of a head start. In today's community comment found on YouTube, S Silver GS says, It's not surprising that Tesla is not focusing on solar sales. They made a lot more money from battery storage, which has a huge backlog and is easier to deliver and install. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. At first, Tesla used third-party installers for their solar roof and began to move towards their aspiration of moving everything in-house. Now, clearly that didn't pan out as Tesla is now back to relying on third-party installers for the roof product. The solar roof is pretty neat, but bottlenecks and specialty labor on various sites have proved to be quite difficult. I actually know a fair amount of people who already have solar panels on top of their homes, and I'm sure you do too. A lot of homeowners that I know didn't pay for it themselves, but instead allowed solar companies to put them in for free, or so they say, and then they just replace the power company that has monthly rates all the same. Now, although these solar companies own the panels and often have lower rates for the regular electricity price, it sounds to me like the homeowners are losing in opportunity cost. Now, rather than simply replacing the power company price for the solar company price, another pathway would be for the homeowner to install it all themselves. The payout for this is huge, but the upfront cost is also very huge and I think is the primary or maybe the only reason why it's held back. I worry that Tesla is losing precious time as everyday solicitors are successfully getting more homes to put in so-called free solar panels which also serve as another barrier for total ownership. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm willing to bet that a lot of you have solar panels, whether you paid for them or whether the power company is making you pay for them. I'm Mikey for Quick Charge. I'll see you on later.